Plywood is a great versatile material. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build this easy workshop storage unit to take these classic IKEA storage boxes. I'm also gonna show you why plywood, contrary to what most people think, does not necessarily have the same strength in each direction. Did you know that? What's the height of these boxes? I desperately need some more storage in my workshop for all the bits and pieces that are too small to go into a large box but too big to go into my small Stanley Saltmaster boxes. So today I'm using these Trofast IKEA storage boxes and building a unit around them out of 12 millimeter ply. I need the exact dimensions of the lip that sticks all the way around the top. And that's where these boxes are hung from in my unit, just in the same way as the IKEA ones do. Other than the fact that the unit is gonna be the size and shape that I want and a lot cheaper. With all the dimensions in hand, I can now work out what the final size of the unit's gonna be, and therefore what size I need to cut my 12 mil ply to. So from there to there is 600 plus scaps. One, two, three. For this project, I bought a full eight by four sheet of 12 mil ply because I have the capacity to get it home. But I think it's a good idea to still buy a full sheet of ply and get the DIY shop to cut it down on their panel saw just to be able to get it into the car as it's just the cheapest way of buying plywood. And it also means you've got plenty left over from this project that you can then use on the next. 834. I really like working with 12 millimeter ply because it's lightweight, easy to cut and join together. And especially for workshop projects, I think it looks better than MDF. You really don't need a track saw to build this project and especially not an all singing, all dancing cordless Makita like I'm using. You just need a circular saw and a straight edge if you don't have a table saw which you probably don't if you don't already have a circular saw. All I've done here is to cut two pieces of ply the same length and width for the sides and then another piece on the back that's a little bit shorter which is going to sit inside the box which just makes the whole thing a lot more sturdy if you decide to screw it to a wall. And lastly I cross cut one strip the same depth as a unit which I now need to cut into 12 sections, which will help me make the rebates that these boxes are gonna slide in and out of. So this is my first spacer stroke rail runner type thing. I'm gonna have six of these on either side, and this is where the boxes are gonna catch onto and hang from. So I'm gonna have six on either side, so 12 in total. And the gap I've designed to be exactly 18 mil between this one and the next one, not 20, because I can't replicate 20. So I went for 18 and cut an off cut of 18 mil ply, which means I can replicate it as I go up. Now width wise, I've already cut a strip that I can cut all of these out of, which means that they're all gonna be the same width in this direction. But in this direction, I really want them all the same. I mean, millimeter perfect. And I don't wanna to spend too much time making an, another 11. So what I'm gonna do is use this setup that you might have seen me using just now, where I've got a rail here that's exactly the same width as the rail, where I can replicate these cuts time and time again and get them exactly perfect without any measuring. If you haven't seen this before, go and check out the video that's up here. I did a review of this on my tools channel a few months ago. So I don't need to measure anything. All I need to do is set it up and keep cutting. So one thing I mentioned at the beginning was the strength of plywood and the fact that most people think that it's the same strength in both directions, which I'll prove to you in a minute, 
that it isn't. But the first thing we need to have a look at is which way the grain is going on the outside layer of ply, which is obvious, isn't it? Not necessarily. It really depends on what type of ply you're dealing with. Most of them, especially the shuttering type ply, it's obvious. If you see grain running one way on the outside, then that first layer is in that direction. But the sort of ply I'm using here has got a bit of a veneer. Let me just show you. Let me just take this B&Q sticker off. Why do they do stickers like this? Make it difficult to clean stuff up. Anyway, that'll come off in a minute. And I hope it's clear on the camera, but looking at this, it very much looks like the grain is going across the piece. And it definitely is. It's definitely going in this direction. However, this piece here is actually a very thin veneer. So what we've got is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of ply here. You see the outside ones are very, very light. The next one in is darker. Actually, that is because this is running with the grain and this is end grain, you can see. Although on the side, it looks like it's end grain. So what we've got here on this type of ply is actually this is a sort of very, very thin veneer. So I wouldn't call that a plywood layer. You can still see if I hold it up to the camera, I've not uh, sanded away too much. This very, very light layer is still there. All I've done is taken off this sort of veneer. So rather than the outside layer of ply running in this direction, it is actually running in this direction. So with that in mind, what I've done is cut two 50 millimeter strips of ply off of the sheet that I'm currently using. One with the grain going in one direction and one going in with the other. And what I'm gonna do is simply support it, which means it's supported at each end and put a load in the middle. And then we can see how much they deflect. So I'm just gonna set this up on these two supports. I've actually got marks on either side to make sure it's exactly in the right place. 102 millimetres. Then I've got a 28 pound weight here. What's that? That's about 13 kilograms. All I'm going to do is put it in the middle. Measure the same again. And that's now 76 millimetres. I'm going to change it over to the one where the grain is running across the sample. Put it in exactly the same position again. 105 millimetres. And then just load it. And that is 60 millimetres. So there you go, about a 15 millimetre bigger deflection on the sample where the grain is going across rather than with it. But why is that? Well, quite simply, because timber going with the grain is stronger than across the grain. To show this, I cut a single ply layer out with the bandsaw and then sand off any other layers from either side leaving just a single ply then cutting it into a square so either direction is of equal size bending it along the grain is easy compared to perpendicular to the grain and similarly breaking it along the grain is easy compared to the amount of force i need to put in to snap it perpendicular to the grain if we then look at my piece of plywood, there's two reasons why it's stronger with the grain than against it. Firstly, there are four ply layers in the stronger direction with three in the weaker direction. So obviously it's gonna be stronger with the grain. But also there's a second reason, and that is that the two outside layers that are furthest from the center line of the board have more effect on the overall strength than any of the others around. So as most plywood is made up of odd number layers of ply, like three or five or seven, the two furthest from the center are going in the same direction, which always makes a plywood sheet stronger where the outside layers are going with the grain. And that's why in civil engineering, when we use plywood to make shutters to pour concrete up to, to take huge loads, it's always specified which way around the sheets need to be, because one way is always stronger than the other.
With all the plywood cut, it's fairly straightforward to glue and pin or screw if you don't have a second fixed nail gun, the pieces together. Before I put on the fourth side, I take the opportunity to fix the side pieces that hold the IKEA boxes, making sure the gaps between them are consistent using an 18mm spacer. With the frame structurally complete, a little bit of sanding and then sealing with a clear fast drying varnish means the cabinet will stay clean and fresh looking within my workshop for some time to come. So there you go, my quick and easy storage unit is complete. So now I've got somewhere to store lots of bits and pieces like old drill bits, you know, the sort of things that you should throw away, but you can't bring yourself to. Obviously, you can build it around whatever way you want. I've gone sideways, which makes it a bit wider, but actually not so deep if it's sitting on a workbench. Cost-wise, this has taken just under half a sheet of ply. This is what I've got left over. So at 24 pounds a sheet, this has cost around about £12. These boxes are around about three. So the whole thing came in around about £30, which is not only cheaper than Ikea, but it does mean you can build whatever you want and get the pleasure of building it yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time.